Today's video, I want to get something cleared up. This isn't an EV charger. This also isn't an EV charger. In fact, the very popular name video I did with eFix titled Nine EV Chargers, Which One Should You Buy? is a completely incorrect title because none of the nine items I featured were EV chargers. And today's video, we're going to be talking about why these and those nine chargers that I discussed are not EV chargers and why the term calling these EV chargers doesn't matter to me and it shouldn't matter to you either. To understand why this isn't a charger, let's understand why these are chargers. So this, this is a cell phone charger or a phone charger as you'd call it in the US and this here is a battery charger for an electric drill that I use. And one thing that both these have in common is that they take the electricity from your wall when you plug it in and convert that electric current from AC waveform to DC waveform. Now they do a couple of other things. The phone charger tends to change it down to about five volts and one amp or 2.1 amps, depending on what your phone charger is. And this here, this one will change the voltage to around about 18 volts and also change the ampage as well. So both these are doing a lot of things to the AC electric. Uh, first of all, they're changing down the voltage. So that's 240 in the UK or 120 in the US to a lower form, five volts or 14 volts. Uh, typically you see in these conversion plugs and charging plugs. And then it's also changing a couple of other parameters. It's making it DC waveform electric. And most importantly, it's also changing the ampage. So it's not as uh, got, got the same amp output. So it's a couple of things, but mainly we're looking at the AC to DC conversion. And that's where these AC home chargers are very different. Now the real term for these products that go on your house is EVSE, that's Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. And that is a hell of a mouthful to use as a term, which is why we're gonna explain in a minute, I don't care if you call it an EV charger. Now if these don't charge your car, how does your car actually charge? Well first let's understand what this, which I'm gonna to refer to as a typical vehicle charger at home actually does it actually because i've stripped this one down but they're all pretty much the same they take ac power in here and connect up to here and then they take that ac power be it 240 120 400 volts ac if it's an ac home charger like this it takes that it runs through all this really fancy pcb stuff inside here and out this end here of the type 2 end it sends the ac electric that it got from the grid, straight through it are all the PCBs and straight out the other end is the same 240 AC current voltage that you got out. Now, there is some slight changes that it can do to it. It can change the ampage, so it can actually reduce the amount of amps that came in. So if you put a 32 amp connection power in here, it won't send out 32 amps here if you tell the charger you've only got a 16 amp supply or you only want to send 10 amps because you might have solar. Now you can do that, but that isn't meaning, that's not doing any meaningful changes. It's just lowering the ampage. So if these things don't charge your car, what's all the fancy PCB stuff for? Now inside these EVSE chargers, that's electric vehicle supply equipment, which is the real word for these EV chargers is a lot of PCB, a lot of electronics. And these electronics do quite a lot of things. Now, they can just change the amperage down, which is a fairly simple piece of electronics, but they're mainly there for safety. They're mainly there to protect you and your car. Now, one of the main things they do is communication. They talk to your car to tell your car what they are, what they're gonna charge the car at, how many amps they can supply, so the car doesn't just randomly try and suck all the power out of your grid and melt all the wires in your house. It's mainly there for communication to say, hey look, this homeowner's, this charger, I'm able to provide you with 16 amps of power, 32 amps of power, and that's exactly what the car will draw. Otherwise, the car wouldn't know what it has to draw. You'd have to change it every time you move to another, you know, go to someone else's house to charge. Their electrics might not be the same, and you might forget to change that setting in your car, which could mean that you might melt their wires and cause a fire. A lot of the other PCB equipment that we see in here is for general safety. Now, here in the UK, we have quite a lot of rules. Could, it could mean it has an RCD protection in it. It could mean it has DC leakage protection, which is quite important because you know, these electric cars, DC cars can leak some DC electric down your uh, 
down your power lines and if you want to understand more about that i did a video with efix on why you shouldn't have a granny cable because most granny cables don't have that protection in and then another piece of safety equipment they have in is a pen fault detection now pen fault detection is to do with here in the uk if your earth comes from the main grid and you haven't got your own earthing system in your house earth spikes then a pen fault could mean that you could touch a metal object in your house and it'd be live because the grid in the earth is disconnected and you could get an electric shock so you can see while this pcb equipment is in there it's mainly for safety and your protection but if we got all this protection and that's what the chargers do how do we actually charge the car if these aren't chargers what's charging our car chargers are built into your car now there's a couple of reasons for this one is size and also practicality so it's cheaper for manufacturers to sort of encourage that adoption on the early days so they fit in the the dc to dc conversion in your car so this sends the ac power to your car your car then converts that ac power into dc and puts it into the batteries there's quite a lot of reasons not just the size but also the cost it just means that it is built into economies of scale a bit better and you can have a smaller charger on your side of your house but you can still charge your car with dc power directly if you you can plug dc power into your car and it will bypass that ac to dc conversion in the car and it just basically has a dc to dc that goes straight into the car's battery it's a little bit more complex than that but we we'll go into that in another video maybe another time and those chargers are your rapid chargers they tend to be your 50 kilowatts and above chargers there is some slower uh, dc chargers at 25 kilowatts i have seen them about but if you're using the type two ccs pins at the bottom or the type one ccs pins at the bottom the two big pins at the bottom of those plugs that's dc power if you're using chadamo that's dc power if you're using a tesla supercharger that is dc power it's just tesla decided to do it through their own clever plug in the us and in the uk uh, we now have ccs on our tesla model 3s Older Teslas use the Type 2 plug in a very special, weird way to put DC power down. That, that's why older AC cars can't plug into the very old supercharger uh, ports because it's DC power. Now, DC power is direct current, as we mentioned before. That goes straight into the battery and charges the car. So, I hope I kind of explained uh, why these are not chargers and why you should not really care if you call them chargers because it's way easier to understand so if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to leave down below a comment don't forget to subscribe to my channel and carry on calling these chargers because the people who get annoyed that you call these chargers on forums don't understand the simplicity of explaining to people yes they're not chargers but it's a really good search term thanks very much i'll see you next week goodbye